Today, we're going to find out. We continue our worship with O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. So before that, we have announcements. Oh, yes. What a horrible way to die. <laughs> yes. All right, I don't have much on the way of announcements. First of all, we do have Bible study continuing uh, at least this Wednesday and probably the following Wednesday at the Utica offices at 6.30. We do it at 6.30 so that Brent has time to eat. So 6.30 there, all are welcome. We'd love to see, we love the people that are there every week and we'd love it when we have a few more too. So uh, we are continuing on our study of the Acts. Uh, besides that, you know, that we are going through the season of Advent. Uh, Christmas Eve service will be held at the Utica location. Uh, that will be at 7 o'clock on Christmas Eve, which is a Tuesday night, if I recall correctly, 7 o'clock in the evening. Now, if we were fortunate beyond our wildest imaginations, and this goes back to what Pastor Dirk Perkadol, we were hoping with our fingers crossed that maybe this would have been our first week in our new location. Unfortunately, when we moved the wall, there was not a 10 foot, there was more than a 10 foot gap be between fire sprinklers. And so we didn't, because of that, pass an inspection. So where does that leave us? That leaves us waiting, uh, leaves us waiting for plans to be approved again. And so, I still have my fingers crossed for um, the first Sunday of Epiphany, which is also the baptism, uh, baptism of our Lord, and that will be in our new location. I did see there are some paper copies of the Cross and Crown newsletter, and if you want to see what the new space looks like, take a look. It looks spectacular. We've got some new blue banners. We've got it up ready for Advent, just like we are here. It's a beautiful thing, and thank you very much, Sylvia, for that. Our tree is up, and thank you, Sylvia, for that. And Kim. And, and Kim, and uh, <laughs> I know your work on trees, so it goes before you. It is just beautiful. Uh, I think we're going to have toys around the tree here sometime uh, soon. We are. There is a box in the uh, back still for unwrapped toys. These are going to be going to foster children in the <coughs> Etiwanda yes. School District. And so, uh, do we still have any trees to be taken? No, I think we are going to pass our goal. So, Excellent. Uh, that, and the more the merrier. Toys, the, the more the merrier. I have, I'll say it out loud, so hopefully I speak this into existence. I'm going to try to put together a short little 30 second video that we can po post on uh, YouTube and on Facebook and maybe even Instagram to get the word out about our toys and maybe people that aren't here can drop off some toys too, give them the chance to, to do that, let them know when we're going to be there to accept all that. So by me saying that, maybe it'll actually happen. All right, beyond that, I, is there any other announcements? Christmas party. Christmas. Christmas party, that's right. Christmas party that is coming up on Saturday, let's see, 25, 4, 3, 2, 21st? Or is no, it the 14th. 14th, I was a week Saturday. off. Yeah. I was a week off, all right, the 14th. That is at Sylvia's house. Uh, I believe that we do in the newsletter have the address, and if any of you people from Gloria Day want to come, uh, we'll get you the address too. You are more than welcome. There are flyers back there. You see, I just hadn't seen all that yet. There are flyers in the back. Thank you very much for that, Mary, for letting me know. And uh, it is catered. We're having an Olive ol Garden. And so that is coming up. And what was the time on that? That was 5.30. I remembered correctly. That's a uh, first for me. So that is coming up as well. Any other announcement? Because I'm sure to care of One, I guess it's just for Ted. See, if you guys weren't here, it would be Ted and I. <laughs> but we're strong and mighty. Ted, the council meeting has been changed to this Thursday, and it will be at 9.30 in the morning. Okay? All right, that's all I got. All right, anything else? And with that, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that, that we are captive to sin, sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son, by his coming, give to all the people of the world the knowledge of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Come to your people and set them free. 
You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promise of old to, no, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. Remember your holy heaven. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies. To show holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. The second reading comes to us from the Philippians, the first chapter, starting with the third verse. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you. Because of your sharing the gospel from the first day until now, I am confident of this, oh, no. that the one who began a oh, no. good work among you will bring it to com completion by the day of Jesus Christ. Oh, no. It is right for me to think this way about oh, all of you, because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness. How I, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes from Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please rise to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. Glory to you, friend. The 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Licinius, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Anybody see Wicked yet? No. Anybody see Gladiator 2? No. They both come out. They're very popular. The movie Wicked is doing very well at the box office. Wicked is an adaptation of the first half of the play, Wicked. The second half of the play, a movie called Wicked Part 2, not much imagination there, will come out in about a year, but same time as Wicked Part 1 came out. This year's movie, Wicked, is an adaptation of the 1995 novel, Wicked, The Life and Times of the Wicked Witch of the West, which was a prequel to the 1939 movie, The Wizard of Oz, with Judy Garland, which was based on the novel, The Wonderful <laughs> Wizard of Oz, by L. Frank Baum, which was published in 1900. Wicked, like all other variations, is a fairy tale. It may contain important message, messages, but all of it is fictional. It never happened. 
The movie Gladiator 2 also came out reasonably. It's, it's doing pretty well at the box office as well. Gladiator 2 is not a fairy tale, but like a fairy tale, it never happened. It's a fictional story set in a historical context, the Roman Empire in the third century AD. Both movies tell their stories in terms of changed morals and values <clears throat> that have been accepted since the works on which they were based were written. Morals and values sometimes change over time, but they don't just change. Change does not require a majority or even a plurality. It only requires some initiative and then agreement or acquiescence or conformity or indifference. And we have seen a great deal of change in the church over the years, not all of it necessarily for the better. We can see it in the way we prepare for Christmas. The faith we proclaim is based on the mighty works of God in history, not on fairy tales. The church is based on real events that took place in real time among real people. The reading from the Gospel of Luke that is being shared in the vast majority of churches all over the world today, Luke 3, 1 through 6, doesn't begin with the words, once upon a time. It locates events in history with the words in the first three verses. In the 15th year of the reign of the Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Licinius, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Ze Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. The people of God are being prepared for the coming presence of God in human flesh, the Messiah, who had been promised for a thousand years by the last prophet, John the Baptist, after an absence of any prophetic word from God for 300 more years. After no word from God, the word of John broke out. Jesus is coming. Today, our Christmas holiday is coming. And we are preparing the way. We'll soon be making lesa and krupaka at our house. But these are only our ethnic and cultural preparations. Yet, even the church no longer gets too much farther than that. We have tree trimming and fundraisers and dinners and chancel decorating and Christmas events and activities and Christmas programs that have a peripheral birth of Jesus message. But their main message is this is who we are. And please, please join our organization. The rationale is that the church has to attract people in order for people to hear our message. At best, this is a marketing strategy. And at worst, it's a bait and switch tactic. It's like the parents who think they are enlightened when they say, I don't want to force my children to go to church. I want them to grow up and decide for themselves. But we do force reluctant children to go to school, to get enough sleep, to eat healthy meals, to limit screen time, and to choose their friends carefully. Or, who when faced with their adult children's indifference to Christianity, say to themselves, I have to pick my battles. In either case, children pick up the message pretty quickly that faith isn't really all that important to their parents. At least not as important as many other things. This year, the world is already about celebrating its cultural and commercial Christmas, and it has been for a long time. But it won't celebrate Christ's Mass, the worship service that will celebrate the birth of Christ. The world is celebrating a holiday, but it won't celebrate a holy day. But then, this week, Christians aren't celebrating Christmas either. We are in the season of Advent, the season before Christmas, which goes on after Christmas for 12 days. Advent means coming. Today we are living between the two greatest advents in the history of the world, the universe and everything. The first advent, or coming, is the birth of Christ. And the second advent will be the second coming of Jesus in 
Christ in judgment. But the world isn't celebrating that. As Donald Fagan of the band Steely Dan said in his lyrics for centuries end, we just suit up for a game the name of which we used to know. We will use words like compassion, but no longer remember their origin. We no longer remember that St. Nicholas, or Santa Claus, is a bishop and martyr, which is why he wears red, or why we give presents at Christmas. Some in the world justify their indifference by saying, I feel closer to God in nature than in church, or I just don't get anything out of worship services. Christians experience God in nature, too. But we know that there is more. Christians are also moved by the birth of a child, by our smallness before the universe on a clear night, by the complex depth of family and relationships. All people experience all the goodness that comes from God, even when we don't give it a name. But all of that, all that we experience, all that we experience as goodness and as beyond us became incarnate in human flesh in Jesus Christ. That's what we celebrate at Christmas. Jesus, born to die, who rose, who is now the head of the body of Christ, the church. And it is in his name that we are saved. We know and experience that name in Christian community, in the relationship that is an expression of our relationship with the one true living God. Christianity is personal, but it is never private. It is the work of the Holy Spirit drawing us together. There's no such thing as an individual Christian apart from Christian community. Worship, like Christmas, isn't about what we get, but about what we give. And we give in response to what God has first given us. Sally and I and James and Nicole were at UCLA's final football game of the season a week ago yesterday. We got tickets, we went. We'd never gone to a UCLA game before, and it was in the Rose Bowl, we, uh, Rose Bowl. it was kind of fun. Yeah. At one point, a UCLA yeah. receiver on a long run stretched forward to reach for the ball. It looked like he had it and everybody cheered, but then it slipped through his hands and everybody went, oh. The little girl sitting behind us said, Mommy, why was everybody so happy and then so sad? <laughs> that is a mystery of our faith. And it leads us to joy. They crucified him, but no one killed Jesus. He gave his life, and then he took it back again. Today, we are preparing to celebrate the birth of that life. That's why it's necessary that we, the church, offer more than programs. That's why it's necessary that we know that we are a church in mission, that we have something to offer, that we, like John the Baptist, have a message to proclaim, a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. In Advent, we call people to prepare to celebrate Jesus' first coming and to prepare for Jesus' second coming with the same mission as John the Baptist, seen in the conclusion today's, to today's reading from Luke. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Something big is coming. And what do we offer? Changed lives. New life in Jesus Christ. Becoming a new creation. The gift of being born again in our baptism. We are concerned today about another land war in Europe, in the Middle East, and in the Far East, even talking in terms of World War III. We know that the world, that none of those would end well. Albert Einstein reportedly said, I know not what weapons will be used to fight World War III, but I am confident that World War IV will be fought with sticks and stones. Yet, we act as if we can isolate ourselves from those things. We are concerned with environmental damage, so advanced that we were fighting brush fires in New York recently. New York! Climate change is reshaping geography. We are concerned with microplastics in our food and in our water that are now appearing in our bodies. 
Yet, we continue to use them for their low cost and convenience. We are no longer thinking about the polarization of our culture, but of its fracturing. We seem disinterested in focusing on what unites us. And yet, the biggest something that is coming is Jesus. And we aren't concerned about that at all as a culture. We don't worry about the second coming, however, as Christians. In fact, we long for it. Because though we may not know what the short-term future holds, we know who holds the future. The first advent of Jesus reminded us that God always keeps his promises. The second advent of Jesus Christ is coming, and we have more to offer the world than a live Merry Christmas. We proclaim God's offer of total life transformation, a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, the gift of eternal life. Christmas Day will be here in two and a half weeks. Did you just tighten up a little bit? There's a lot to do. We're getting ready. And almost all of our preparations are totally beside the point. We see the point in our call to ministry, reflected in the call of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was a relative of Jesus. They were like second cousins, once removed or something like that. They were almost the same age, so like Jesus, John was about 30 years old when he appeared. He preached out in the boonies, and people from all over, from all walks of life, came out to hear him. His message was simple, and it's the only way we can prepare for Christmas. He proclaimed the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. He had a harsh word for everybody, and yet people came out to hear him. You're going to hear about that next week. Jesus had been born and was now beginning his public ministry. The history of salvation was coming to its fulfillment. The kingdom of God had drawn near. Believing that is why we do what we do, to prepare the way for Jesus to enter the hearts of people we know. Repent. The kingdom of God has come near to you. Jesus brought the same message when he began his public ministry. Jesus sent his 12 disciples out with that same message. It was the theme of the first Christian sermon. It was the first word Paul used when describing the good news. Repent. It's not a word we use much anymore. Because it has been associated with a manipulative turn or burn approach that obscures the meaning of the good news. Repent. And it's widely misunderstood as only saying, I'm sorry. That's not what it means to repent. Repentance means life transformation. It's a gift. It comes from God. It comes from the Greek word metanoia. It means to change one's way of thinking. It means to turn around. It means the gift of new birth, of becoming a new creation, of turning away from all the things that are killing us and turning toward God's new life through faith in Jesus Christ. It means becoming a new self. Have you ever made popcorn? My mom used to make it by pouring the hard popcorn kernels into a pan, then covering the kernels with oil, then covering the pan and putting it on the stove, and then they all pop. Now we pull out a package and put it in a microwave oven. We hit the, the number and it pops. Some microwaves come with a popcorn preset because it's used so much for that purpose. It's easy, but not for the popcorn. Popcorn turns inside out under heat. Heat causes the moisture in the hard kernel to expand and then explode to get out, transforming the kernel into something that can bring nourishment. The Holy Spirit is the fire that transformed the hardened hearts of human beings. Author and theologian Leonard Sweet describes the popping process as completely transforming the kernel's purpose. What was hard becomes soft. What appeared lifeless explodes into something that can feed people. That's what it means to repent. Our natural relationship with God is broken. Our rebellion against God is what brings evil into the world as it has from the beginning. Sin is separation from God. Repentance is God's gift that leads us away from that brokenness to the reconciliation made possible by Jesus' death on the cross. Repentance is turning towards God. 
and as we who are Christians are at the same time saints and sinners, we all need to repent regularly. Our best preparation to celebrate the first coming or advent of Jesus and to be ready for the second coming to judge the world is our repentance. There were wild and wildfires around Fontana but a little more than a week ago. Fires get our attention. They cause us to think about what's important. Advent does the same. This is a season that reminds us to prepare. It is the beginning of a new church year and a reminder that we too were born again. It is the message that we have to share as we prepare for what's coming, the gift of God of a new beginning of Jesus Christ. Christ, who was fully God and fully human being in the flesh. Christ, who is coming again in the last judgment to perfect our eternity. There is no wizard behind the curtain, but there is the King of Kings. Not a triumphant gladiator, but a suffering servant. Not a fairy tale, but a living being in a particular place at a specific point in time. Born to die, to rise and to save the world, and he's coming again. Prepare the way. Amen. Amen.
Please stand as you are able as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen, seen, and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. As spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we prepare for Emmanuel, God with us. Let us pray for all people and places that long for God's presence. Refining God, move through your church. Root out practices that harm your people and kindle a fire for sharing the gospel among bishops, pastors, deacons, and all the baptized. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Renewing God, transform your creation. Steer us from habits that harm what you have made and guide us in practices that preserve and restore creatures and habitats. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Ruling God, teach the nations your ways. Strengthen organizations and communities that broker peace and care for refugees, immigrants, and all caught in the center of conflict. Lord, in your mercy, receive Rescuing God, restore your people who are in any need. Heal all who are suffering, provide comfort and strength, and nurture sustained wholeness for the future. Lord, in your mercy, receive Reforming God, fill these congregations with your presence. Enrich your seasonal preparations and bless the efforts by worship committees, music ensembles, staff, clergy, and lay leaders as they work it in the weeks ahead. Lord, in your mercy. Reassuring God, we remember those who have died and rest in you. Guide us in deep gratitude for their life and allow us to learn from their faithful witness. Lord, in your mercy. Savior of the nations, come and receive these prayers and the pleas of our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please exchange a sign of reconciliation. for all those in need until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us lift. It is right to give the Lord to the Lord our thanks and praise. No. Yes. Right. 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 Right.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you for the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the Word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ is dying. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May our word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your life. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, O Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Torn all apart How many 
frankincense for his pleasure. Fire for the cross of suffer. Do you believe this who we've waited for? How many kings have come to their thrones? How many lords have abandoned their homes? How many great Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are sick, homebound, and in prison. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament, and give us all that comfort of your abiding presence through, your, through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please stand for our sins.